Good morning, everyone. Can everyone see my screen and can everyone hear me this morning? If you can just type a yes or a no in the chat box. There's a speech bubble on your bliz. And if you click that, then it opens up the chat box and I can see whether you can hear me or not. Uh, it would be nice if you can hear me and see my screen. Just a minute here. Well, for some reason, the chat's not working, so I'm going to have to figure out how to get the chat working. Oh, that's cute. Okay, before we get started, I want everyone to take a moment to read over the risk disclaimer and the hypothetical performance disclosure. Basically, anytime you are trading, there is a potential for losses, okay? So, um what you want to do is make sure that you are not trading with money you cannot afford to lose okay that is above all now Let's go ahead and minimize this. Now, I wanted to do uh, a quick thing before the market report this morning. Notice that this is my live account, okay? You have the blue header, not the green header, okay? On the demo, you'll have demo over in the left-hand corner, and you have the green header. Now, a lot of people... Um, believe that you can't log into your live account and your demo account at the same time. You actually can. You just need two different types of browsers. Remember, you have a username for demo. It begins with demo dash whatever, okay? And then you have your live account, which will not begin with the demo, okay? So what you have to do, for example, I have the demo in Edge opened, and then in Mozilla, I actually have my live account, okay? So you can see over here it's blue, over here it's green. You have to keep them, you know, straight, I guess is the best way to put it. Now here's what I want to show you, because uh, this has been happening recently and it's very important, especially if you're trading the market reports, that you actually do this, okay? Because if you don't, you'll get very frazzled very quickly, okay? So what we're going to do, 
let's go and look at the forex binaries on the USD JPY. So we're going to select the 7 to 9 a.m. And what we want to do is actually compare the binary strikes and the prices, okay? That's the most important thing because you want to make sure that you can do this on the live edge as well as um, in the demo when you're practicing, okay? So below, I have my live account, so this is receiving live data. And above that, I actually have the demo version, okay? Now, what we want to do is say, okay, we want to go short. Um, well, let me pull up a chart before I tell you whether I want to go short or long. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's say that we want to actually go short on the USD JPY. Notice that your indicative prices are the same. There's no difference. But if I was doing it in demo, I would probably choose the 106.32, which has about $25 of risk, okay? But when you come down here, do you see there's a $10 difference? This is why I wanted to show it to you so you do not get this and you're like, oh my God, the prices are changed. The difference is this is one market maker providing the information for the demo and then down here on the live account you have multiple market makers okay um let's see if i can fix the chat um let's see the chat no it's still not working for some reason Not sure why it is not working. Um, the chat is still not working and I'm trying to figure it out so you can ask me questions. But for some reason, it's not working. So let's come up with another way. And that's going to be on Skype. All right. Let me sign into Skype and then y'all can ask me questions on Skype. It's an easy solution for this morning. All right. On Skype, oh, Emily, you're good. <laughs> you already did it in Skype. <laughs> okay, on Skype, if you do Gail Mercer binary signals, all one word, you'll find me, okay? So if you have a question about what I just showed, if you just type it in Skype, I'll see it real quick, okay? Now, this is where you need to shop around on your binaries or you just wait and let it come to you, okay? Um, sometimes this number, especially because this one has got only 50 minutes left, sometimes these numbers will come back to you and that's what you want to wait on. The other thing is you can go and say, okay, maybe I need to look at the spreads because they don't do it as much on the spreads as they do it on the binaries, okay? So let's go and look at the Forex spreads, okay? And we're comparing the same time to the same time. Do y'all understand that? So right now, price is trading at 106.42. That would be the 106.50. 
So up here it's 39, up down here it's 38. Do y'all see how close that is? Okay, and that's what you want to see. So, again, let's go back to the binary, and let's say that we're going to trade this market report, okay? So, let's say that we're going to do one to the long side and one to the short side, okay? Um, for those that just joined us, if you have a question, the chat box is not working. So, if you have a question... If you'll just sign into Skype and add Gail Mercer binary signals, then type the message in there and I'll get it. Okay. Um, so again, if we wanted to do, for example, a long position using the binary, um, let's see, we want it for the lowest risk possible, okay? Right now, the USD JPY is trading at 42. We're expecting a 40 pip move off of this report, okay? Um, you've got a choice. You can either do the short or the long on the binary, okay? So let's say that we're going to do the short, okay? By having this open, I can say, okay, the one I really want to go with would probably be either 28 or 24, okay? So if I come up here, let's just do the 28, okay? And we're just going to do one contract, okay? Um, and then on the spread side, we did the short on the binary, okay? We're going to do long over on the spread. Do y'all see that? So we're going to do the 53, which is only going to be $3 of risk, just in case it goes in the opposite direction. Does everybody understand that? And if you come down here and look at the spreads, you can see that pretty much does mimic the price that we got up here. Okay, it's a $2 difference versus a $10 difference on the binaries. Does everybody understand that? Now, they don't do this on every market report, okay? This is why I encourage you to have both open because the fact that they are doing it tells you they're expecting a bigger movement than normal. Doesn't mean they'll get it. It just means that they're anticipating that bigger movement. Okay? Now, I'm still going to go in here and I'm still going to set the same profit target. Okay? In this case, we're short. So, that would be 15 um, since it's a market report, I'm going to do 10. Sorry about that. Now, you may think, okay, now I can close the live account. I don't suggest that. I suggest that you actually watch the number to see if your target was ever filled. Okay. And the reason for this is just to make sure that you know the differences and you can actually tell when, if, if there's a big difference. So let's say there's $20, $25 of difference in your premiums. Don't trade that market report. They've increased it too much, okay? Sometimes it's $5 difference. Sometimes it's $10. It's just, it varies, okay? Does everybody understand that now?
I have seen it where you get better pricing on your live account, and other times you get better pricing on the demo. It's just knowing the difference between the two. All right, so I'm going to minimize this one. Now, we can do the same thing for the, um, the euro, okay? Let's see. Let me look at the euro real quick. And we're entering a little bit early. Um, now the euro on the 15 minute chart, I'm just going to show it to you. Um, you can see that this is overextended and we're going into a market report. So in this case, I'm only going to do a directional to the downside. Now I could be wrong. So we're at 23.87 which is here and I'm actually going to come down to 2374 and see if that one works. Now again, you can go right back and say, okay, could I have done that on my live account? Okay. And let's see where I was at. At 2374. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and we're going to look at 2374 and right now you can get it for about 30 bucks of risk. Do you see how this one is closer to the actual price up here? There's only a $2 difference on these. This is what I'm talking about if you kind of shop around. Sometimes you're better off shopping around. Okay, do y'all see that? Sometimes it's a matter of the currency. Remember, the USD JPY is one of the top currencies. Okay, so in this case, you could have done both sides on the euro just by shopping around and saying which ones have the best premium matches. Okay. In this case, because I believe that this is going to come down, I'm just going to do a directional, okay? Um, another one, I don't really like doing the British pound dollar because the strikes are $10. Sometimes you can get good deals on those. Let me put in a target on this one real quick um, because I'll forget. And that's par for the course for me. Okay, so let's go and look at the British pound and see if it is conducive to doing a trade. Okay. Now, right now we're trading at 39.84, which is around the 39.82 area. You can go one strike out for 77 up here one strike out for 75 down here. Do y'all see that? Do you see how those have tightened up? This is why you need to shop around. And remember the chat box is not working. So if you have a question, type it into Skype. There is also a way, if you go to your Blizz, I forgot about this. Does everybody see my Blizz here? Do you see there's a chat box here? You can actually chat with me here too, because I have it open. Ha, huh, I forgot about that. They give you two ways to chat. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I'm distracted this morning. So in this case, do you see how close these premiums are? So you could say, okay, 
In this case, I'm going to do a short on the British pound. Okay. And I'm going to do a long. And again, looking at 92, you've got 36 down here, 35 up here. Knowing me, I would go with the next one. And just that's the way I am. <laughs> I'm going to go for the cheapest risk. So do y'all see how it could be dependent on the actual currency? Now, you do want to set profit targets on these. So we're going to do 10 on the short. And we're going to do 90 on the long. Now, even the euro and the British pound, they typically move about 40 pips on this market report too. So they're going to move the same as the USD JPY. You're just getting a better premium on the euro in the British pound versus the USD JPY. Do y'all understand that? Yes, no, maybe. And again, this is what I what I refer to as shop around for the better premiums because sometimes it's just a matter of changing your market or it's combining a binary with a spread. And the only way you will know which binary is the better to trade is comparing your demo to your live. Okay. Um, and if you don't have a direction on the euro, I mean, I do, but maybe you don't, you could come in here and say, okay, could I do a long position? Okay. Um, the one I would choose over here would probably be 23.98. But again, I want to make sure that I could get that on the live because I want to be able to replicate what I'm doing. Okay, do you see how the longs uh, are about $10 off here? Again, this is why you would want to look at it, okay? Now, you could get one for 29 right now. Um, but again, I'm directional. You could also go and say, okay, I don't like that premium, so I'm going to go over and check here. You've got about $16 of risk. So to me, if I'm going to go long, to me, this would be the better option. Okay? Why? Because it's lower risk. And I just about guarantee you, you can duplicate that over here. That's the binaries. Where's my spreads? So, see how you can get the same risk on the spread? Again, shopping for the best deal. Okay? And that's all you're doing. You're shopping around to see what's the best deal that I can get on this particular market report. And that's what it's all about, shopping around. Now, this is not um, one of our trade flow analysis because it's a market report. Any damn thing can happen, okay? It'll go up, it'll go down, it'll do whatever it wants to do. You know, um, typically my directional, if I'm going to have a choice, my directional trade will be the binary, my non-directional will be the spread just because the spreads typically have a lower risk like it was on the euro this morning.
Now, you could, if you wanted to, um, you could also look at, for example, the futures. You're probably going to get some movement off of the futures. Um, the only thing I don't like about the futures on this is your first expiration on the futures will be 10 a.m. So, in this case, you're not going to have time decay working in your favor because that has an hour and 33 minutes. Okay, that's the reason you don't see me trade a lot of the futures just because they're not conducive. Okay. I like the time decay. I like it to kick in in my favor. And if it's not kicking in my favor, I don't like it. And in this case, it's not going to kick in in your favor. So, um, I'd rather do directionals on those versus um, the split by in longs. The market report should be released in about three minutes. Now, on the USD JPY, um, this is a chart I have in multi-charts, and I'm expecting it to come back to 57, um, but then it may go down after that. The only thing is the 30-minute is kind of overextended, so we may actually go up higher. We don't know yet. Um, I am going to mark this chart real quick with where we're at. Now, that's the spread, so it's anything above this area because your price was at 106.52, and then you've got 106.28 to the downside. So I'm going to mark that one down here. And it's got to do it relatively quickly after this report. I'm just going to change that to red. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the British pound. Um, the British pound, we have two binaries. We have 4,002 to the long side. So I'm going to put that one there, and we have 39.72 to the short side. And now the market report should come out. Trying to get it where we can see the charts and still see if an order got filled, but I'm not sure that's going to work.
Now the blue is the spread on the euro. The red is the binary. And you can see the market report has not generated the 40 pip move that we anticipated. Um, still has about 12 minutes. And sometimes they're delayed. The reaction is delayed. I've seen that quite a few times. You need about another 10 pip of movement on the British pound dollar over on the USD JPY. You need roughly about a 5 pip move to the downside. And normally, you know, I don't try to micromanage these trades. If you wanted to, you could cover the cost of the spread on the euro. But again, I don't try to micromanage it. You're trading a market report that's supposed to create a lot of movement. And you have two, four, six positions on with less than $100 of risk. Okay. I don't micromanage for that.
And this is one that has been a very disappointment because you haven't had a very much movement. But again, sometimes that movement, it'll take a few minutes to come in. They're digesting the information. What does it mean? Especially with a rate announcement next week, they're really probably overanalyzing it. And I don't really care what the result was. It's the reaction that I'm trading, not the actual result. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee while we're waiting on this one. Well, I see I didn't miss very much. I don't even think we got half of the anticipated movement today. I am in the middle of updating all of these market volatility reports on the Forex side. And I'm going to be using a different average formula so that it's actually closer to what we can anticipate as far as movement goes. I'm going to publish it uh, in another book. It should be up May, I think.
I just had someone ask me a question that sometimes you can see that they're favoring one side over the other with the binaries. And you can see that in the binaries. Just remember that they can be as wrong as we are, okay? Because the market will do what the market wants to do when the market wants to do it and not before. And that's why you can't take it personal if you have a losing trade. It, it doesn't matter. The market will do what the market wants to do. And I have seen many times where I took the cheaper um, binary, even though they were favoring the long side, I actually went to the other side and actually made money on it. So, you know, in that case, the market liked what I did. It didn't like what they did, you know. Sometimes the market likes them and doesn't like me, okay. It can go either way. The market does not care about you personally. A lot of times I find that the spreads are uh, more even, but that's for this week. Next week, it could be that the spreads are wider, but the binaries aren't. So that's the reason I tell you to actually look at both of them, you know, and don't just say, I'm going to trade the USD JPY. Hey, sometimes it's the other ones that have a more favorable outcome. Okay. Um, for those that just joined us, if you have Skype, you'll need to type your message into Skype for me. The, my Skype name is Gail Mercer Binary Signals, okay? Or you can type it into the Blizz chat box, um, and I can see it. Not, oh, this is complicated. <laughs> um, the one that you would need to type it into is this Blizz box um, versus the small one that you have up right now. For some reason, it's not working today.
Now I'm going to leave my profit target on the British pound uh, dollar only because this is still overextended and this reversal bar says it's going to go down further as well as the 30 minute is overextended. Now I might be wrong on it, but I'm going to leave it where it's at. Same thing on the euro dollar. You can see that this is moving down and this one is starting to turn. So I'm going to kind of leave those as they are um, because we only have seven minutes left until expiration. And it could be that, you know, it doesn't move down the three pips that I need it to move down on the euro dollar. I'm willing to take that chance, okay? And that's what it comes down to. Are you willing to take that chance? Once these finish, we'll be going over to the futures, um, just to let everyone know. I don't like to trade the futures until at least 9 o'clock, because then you start having time decay in your favor. Um, whereas if you're doing the one hour um, versus a two hour, time decay is not in your favor. On the two hours, it is on the one hour. Now, you can see this has have four minutes left. Sometimes when there's only four minutes left, I'll come in here and delete this order. And again, this is something you have to decide for yourself. Because in this case, I believe that at expiration, it will be below 74. Either equal to or below. Okay? Um, so I just go in and I delete that uh, order. Okay, that's something, again, you have to decide that for yourself. There's no right or wrong way to do it. The difference is that instead of collecting 68.75 in profit, I would actually collect the full 78.75, okay? And I'll probably do that on the... Uh, 
euro as well. And I just go in and delete it. And that's fine as long as this number is below or equal to my strike. If it's at 123.740, that was a good call for me. But if it is 123.741, that would be a bad call. And do you see how long it's taken to get the movement off of this market report? Again, this is why I don't try to micromanage. Sometimes it takes them a while to say, oh, well, we didn't like that market report. Oh, well, we did like that market report. So you just have to be patient and wait it out. But again, that's easy to do when you're not risking a lot of money. If you're risking a lot of money, it makes it much harder to stick with your trade. For those of you that just joined us, if you have a question, you have to type it into the Skype window. Um, my Skype name is Gail Mercer Binary Signals. For some reason, the chat's not working, and it's probably a user issue on my part. <laughs> it would not surprise me because I'm new to Blizz, so it's probably something I'm not understanding that I need to do, that I didn't know I needed to do. And you can see this is 59 seconds um, until expiration. This is where you really need, or need to monitor these values, okay? Um, do I think it's going to go above my levels? No. I don't think the euro or the British pound is going to move that much in the next 38 seconds. But what that allowed me to do because I was watching it was collect this full premium versus, you know, giving up $10, okay? And I was willing to take that risk. You know, that's something that you have to decide whether you're willing to take that risk or not. And in this case, um, for those that were here at eight o'clock, you saw that I compared this with the live account. So I know that my results today match what I could have done in my live account. Does everybody understand that? Now, did we make a lot of money on the USD JPY? No, we ended up losing money on that one, but we more than compensated for it on the Euro in the British pound, okay? I knew to look at those because I like to shop around. You know, I'm a bargain shopper. That's what I do. All right, so let's go and let's see what the futures are doing this morning. Let me get rid of all of these lines on the charts that I drew lines on. All right, so now let's go see what the futures are doing. Now, this is, and I'm going to bring over the trade flow because this is what determines. We don't have any market reports to trade now other than crude oil inventories. So uh, that comes out at 1030, and I may or may not um, see it or trade it. So let's go over. 
the um, trade flow analysis. First, price has to be at an ATR, okay? Well, this is where uh, the market analyzer really comes into play. The ES is at an ATR. The Dow is at an ATR. The Russell is at an ATR, okay? That tells me I have trade potentials on all of these markets, okay? So let's start with the ES, okay? And we need it to be at an ATR, okay? That is the first thing that we need. Do we have trade alignment? That means that I have two ATRs in my favor. In other words, um, I have a cyan and I have a white. That tells me that both the three and the 12 minute ATRs are below price, okay? Um, stochastics confirmation. This can be hidden divergence, it could be trend divergence, or it could just be confirming what I see on the chart. In this case, we've made equal lows and we're pretty much making equal lows in the stochastics, okay? So in this case, could you enter a long position? Yes, because number one, and I'm going to just mark it off. We're at an ATR. We have the trade alignment and the stochastics is confirming. Now, I prefer that we get hidden divergence just like we just had, okay? In other words, we came back to the same area, but do you see how the stochastics just went below? That gives us hidden divergence, okay? So, in this case, because I'm always trading binaries, I'm actually going to do just a, a standard futures contract. And I'm only going to do one contract, you know, if you... Oh, I did the wrong direction. We're going to buy the market. Sorry about that. All right. And our stop is going to be... Uh, I would say 27.78, okay? All right. And you need to make sure you have the stop in here if you're trading futures. Um, it is not like a binary option, okay? It just got filled. This is not like a binary option, okay? You have unlimited risk, even if you have a stop on, actually, because um, there are times that it will jump over your stop, okay? And you have to be aware of that, okay? Now, I'm going to leave that open. All right, we can actually go and look at the NASDAQ. Now, the ES, in my opinion, is the worst market to trade, but that is my opinion. We can also look at the Dow, because you see all of them are at an ATR. And they're all giving you the same pattern, every one of them. I'll take that back. The the Dow was not. Was it the Dow?
was deciding to be very slow this morning. Something's wrong between my charts and my market analyzer. This is registering a magenta peak, but there hasn't been a magenta peak. So there's something off between my market analyzer. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. We do have a magenta peak over on the 45 minute. We just don't have it on the 12 minute. You can barely see that white congestion dot over here. It has not been able to close above that area.
Now, I think it's at least going to come back to 70, 86.75. What I would like to see on the three minute is for it to test this ATR at 7109 right now. With the stochastics being overextended, it should. To me, that would be the better entry and you would want hidden divergence. In other words, you want it to be lower than this high but you want the stochastics to be higher than 30. Now, if you were going to trade this, um, the market opening, okay, then I would definitely use a binary option. I would not be in the futures because there's just too much risk at stake. I would want it to be around this ATR before I went into it. And I think you could get potentially 7096 uh, to the short side. But again, I want it to retrace some first. And that would still give us our trade flow entry because you would have both the red and the white in your favor. Just gonna have to wait for it to get there. Notice that your 180 stochastics is up at 80. Uh, that's the market that's overextended as well. I'm waiting on this to come up to the ATR before we have an entry.
you can see that the buyer stepped in on that last bar on the three minute chart. You can also see the Stochastics is oversold with buyers stepping in. This is where you're expecting it to come back to this ATR. And it currently is about 35 ticks from the ATR. So I'm going to go grab me a cup of coffee and then I will be back. Alright, I am back. You can see the ES is back to the ATR. So that just tells me we're within five ticks of this ATR. I would still like to see it get closer to this ATR. You still have the magenta peak over here. And I'm going to use this one as an example because it's close enough because the, the bar is um, close enough to the ATR to actually take a trade. Because I would be in the market at the opening of the market, I would want to use a binary. I would not want to be in that market at the opening because this is when you get the wide bars, okay? Um, and I can't do this one because it's against my trade flow. There is a trade flow that would allow me to enter, but I'm not using it in the room this morning. And price is at an ATR, so we can check that one off, okay? But this is the one that we cannot check off. We don't have trade alignment. You have an ATR up here and an ATR down here. They're split, so that tells me I cannot take a trade, okay? Does everybody understand that? Now, I can go back to the NQ and wait for that one. I'm not trying to break my rules this morning. I'm actually trying to stick with my rules. This is 07.
you need a reversal bar for this hidden divergence to be confirmed. You don't have it yet. Now, this bar is going to end, and that's close enough to a reversal bar for me to actually enter this one. Price is currently at 71.03. Again, I'm still coming in at the 70.96 area. Notice this only has $22 of risk. Okay. Um. And that's important because you're trading the market opening. And the market opening is very similar to a high volatility report. Anything can happen. And I'm just going to set a target on that one at 15. I would not be in the futures on this at all. Not with the market opening. If you want to see how fast they can go against you, then you trade the market opening with a future contract. Where do I have my divergence? Okay. From here to here, you have a lower high with a higher high in the stochastics. Because this was a 30 bar reversal, it actually should go down. Do you see that, Wepper? doesn't mean it will again you have to remember this isn't personal it's just the market doing what the market wants to do when the market wants to do it Um, this high, Whipper. I mean, this was the high before.
if I go in and I put the trend SR on that chart, um, I would just about bet you it comes in at that high. It's not always a given because it has to be three bars. So this is the high that you're probably using. I know this is a high, so I use that one. And I can tell it because see how flat the RSI went? You had the two red dots there. It measured that high. Now I can make that show as a high by simply going in and setting the trend SR to a two. Well, we'll have to set it to a one. Okay. Do you see how it picked it up now? Wepper? It's just how many bars you're looking back. That's the only thing that determines that. Um, I know you would use the high before, but what would be your reasoning for using that high? And could you implement that on the market consistently? What's the difference between this high and this high? They're both reversal bars. So what is the difference? Now, our target is for it to come down here to at least the blue ATR, which is at 70.87, okay? And we have to get filled on this order or exit the position when it gets there, okay? If it hesitates at all, you better exit your position. And using the binaries, you can enter a little bit early. You cannot enter early if you're trading the futures, okay? There's too much risk on board for that. I'm going to move this real quick so I can
I really want to monitor this more than anything. Now it's approaching this ATR and I don't like to be in the market when it's approaching that ATR. Okay, so usually in this case, I just go ahead and pop open this window because I'm more inclined to take profits because of where it's at at the moment. Am I going to lose $11 in profit? Yes, I am. But that's okay because I had a risk to reward of greater than one to two. Does everybody understand that? I can do that. In other words, I'm not willing to sit in this for another 20 minutes just to get an extra, what was it, $25 in profit, $26 in profit. I'd rather lock it in. Any questions on that one? And this is why. Do you see how it's bouncing off of this ATR? That's normal. Okay. My strike was right up here at, I think, 7096. Very easily, they could have taken my profits back. I like to keep my profits. That's what makes you a trader. Especially with this being a wide bar to the downside, they're probably going to retrace about half of that which is going to put it above my strike more than likely, okay? The name of the game is take your profits. You cannot go wrong by taking profits, especially like on that one we had uh, greater than a one to two risk to reward ratio. That's like a dream come true, especially trading a brown area. what will likely happen now. Typically, because you're at the ATR on the 45-minute chart, and I know that because the blue ATR is the 45-minute chart, okay? Um, typically, you're going to get a retracement, okay? And that is going to create a lower high on this 45-minute, okay? And ideally, that's what you want. This is saying down, okay? Um, this one, you only have, no, you have both the red and the blue in your favor, but not the white. I would prefer that we had the white in our favor. The red is the 12 minute, the blue is the 180, okay? That's the difference in these. So you've got the 12 and the 180 aligned, but the 45 minute is not aligned to your position. Does everybody understand that? Now, do we have a trade? No. Is there anything at an ATR? No. You've had some uh, nice ones over on the Forex, though. And it's using the same criteria. You know, on the British pound dollar, um, you have two ATRs in your direction. And this is one, Wepper, that you would be correct in because, oop, pin it there. Okay. Now, do you see how this high is lower than this high? 
but if you connect those lines on there, it's not going to let me draw. But from here to here, that gives you hidden divergence. Okay, because this was lower than this in price, but the stochastics is giving you hidden divergence. And that just told you this is probably going to pop to the upside, which is pretty much done. If you go over and look, For some reason, I can't get my cursor back. Okay, let's see if it'll come back now. Okay, it's not letting me get my cursor back. I'm probably running out of memory, actually. Um, on the Euro Yen, you had the same scenario. But I can't show it to you because it's not giving me the cursor back. I'm not really sure why either. There we go. All right. So if I show you the Euro Yen, do you see how you came back to the ATR? Okay. And do you see how this was hesitating around here? All right. Do you see how this high is higher than this high over here? But look how big of a difference of hidden divergence that is. That was indicative that the market was going to move down, which it did. We are trying to get the hidden divergence programmed into the stochastics. Um, if we do, I'm also going to do the trend divergence, which I have for multi-charts in TradeStation. Um, I just don't have it for NinjaTrader yet. But if we get the hidden divergence in, I'll probably add it. Because you can see here, you had trend divergence, trend divergence, okay? And this just indicates that the market's going to go up. Um, same thing on the British pound, okay? Here, you had trend divergence to the downside. Here, you had trend divergence to the upside. These are easier because they're very specific. The hidden divergence, a lot more complicated to program, but my programmer thinks he has it done so we're testing it at the moment again here you have the trend divergence indicating a downward move okay in which it did come out and that does use the stochastics mm. you're getting trend divergence right now on the three minute nasdaq which is where we anticipate it coming back to test the ATR again, okay? And this is the hardest part of trading, is waiting on that setup. There's not always a trade every moment of the day. Sometimes you just have to wait. But 
and potentially getting a magenta peak on the three minute that should push it back up to the ATR which is where I want it to go anyway on the USD JPY you just had hidden divergence um, I'm going to use multi charts because I want to lose my uh, cursor again so this was the last high okay and do you see how this high came in lower and look at what your stochastics is doing okay that's indicative that this is going to move down can we trade that with the trade flow that we're using this morning no we cannot this is a good indication not to take that uh short though i mean not uh, that long position i would not be taking it Right now, you're 55 ticks off this ATR, way too far to even think about taking a trade. You have hidden divergence going to the short side. Your trade analysis is telling you to go long. Why would you go long against hidden divergence to the downside, Whipper? Does that make sense to you? Oh, I'm going to go long with hidden divergence telling me it's going to go down. No, 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 no. That's a no-no. Well, if you were using the trade flow on this, you have two ATRs to the long side, okay? So you're thinking about going long, but you have hidden divergence with the stochastics being overbought. Are you sure you want to go long here? That's a great way to filter that trade out, but I wouldn't be going long there. And for those of you that do not know, this is a three bar reversal to the downside, indicating today is going to be a down day because the next bar will be down. Now, we were on the long side with the ATRs. And that just tells me I don't want that trade. And this is the same thing I tell you if you have the binary signals. If you just bought that up and saw that the stochastics was overextended, to the long side, you don't take that trade. There's too many other trades that you could potentially take. Uh, I would not take that trade.
it looks like the U.S. CAD is setting up for a short. You have the blue, the white, and the red all above price. It's in the midst of a retracement now. If it gets back to 2962 prior to the crude oil inventory report, I would be looking to, to probably short the USD CAD. Now this one, we're still waiting on something to happen here. You can see that Magenta Peak never came in. And this is when, why I like looking at Forex. Because you can see you had an entry here. You may potentially have an entry on the Aussie. Um, but it would need to form a reversal bar to the upside to confirm uh, the divergence on this one. So far it's not. This one, if you had entered, you've made a nice profit on the binary on this one, depending on whether you used in the money or at the money or out of the money. Um, the Euro, I would be waiting for a retracement back to the ATR. The British pound is kind of just hesitating, but I think it will come back and test this ATR. This one is the one I'm watching right now. I'd like it to get here prior to the uh, crude oil inventory report. I would like to see it go above this level at 70, but not take out this high, okay? This one I would not touch. I just would not touch that one. not with hidden divergence on the uh, short side. I would bypass that trade in a heartbeat. And again, it gives you something to look at besides just futures. Um, when you're waiting for a trade set up, I have found that typically if the futures market is not moving, then the forex market will be moving or if forex is not moving then the futures market would be moving And you are not getting hidden divergence on the Aussie because it just took out the last low. Um, I don't know, Wepper. I do have a mindset to a smoothing of two just because I want to see it quicker. And you might have yours set to the default at three. It's just uh, an input in the stochastics. A two can make it a little bit whippier, but that's okay for me because I'm using it for the hidden divergence. If you go under inputs, you'll have smoothing length. And I just about bet, yeah, yours is set to three. 
set it to two. It makes a difference on how quickly it turns. That's all. A two will turn quicker than a three. Um, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. No, I have mine set to two, not three. Um, wait a minute, I'll show you. So here, if you go to the stochastics, you can see smooth and length one and two is set to two. Um, it does make it a little bit whippier, okay? So just be aware of that. I'm okay with it being like that. Okay, you have crude oil inventories coming out in about 30 minutes. More than likely, I would say that crude's going to go up. So this would be your crude chart, okay? Um... You could do, for example, the 24.75 on this one, and you could do, that's going to give me $50 of risk. I really don't want $50 of risk. So before I enter um, a binary to the short side, I would want to see uh, what I could get on the spread side. Now the spreads are not as conducive um, as the binaries on crude, but in this case, you know, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm only willing to risk five dollars on the short side. Okay. Now, if we get a big enough movement, you know to the short side, then that would cover potentially the binary, or if we get a big movement to the upside, then you would make more than enough to cover the short spread. Do y'all understand that? Um, and I'm entering these just a little bit early. We could do the same thing on the US CAD. Again, taking the 11 a.m. 
right now price is currently trading at 29.46 which is here and this one has more risk than what i really want so i would be inclined to do the 29.24 to the short side well if it gets me in and again you know you should be shopping around okay if we went to a long spread you know would it be advantageous okay well you've got 10 bucks of risk on this one okay the other thing to note is you're only about 10 pips off okay from where the indicative is and where your offer is you need to notice that now you can also instead of doing it at 11 a.m say okay what about the noon okay in the noon you're getting the same price ten dollars but you're getting extra time with it okay so in this case let's say that we do this one for ten dollars just in case it does go against us do y'all understand that i mean i could do this you know an all-day webinar on shopping around believe me now what do you need to do you still need to put in your profit targets um on the long binary set your target at 90 or i would set mine at 90 i need to rephrase that on the short binary wait a minute did i do that right yeah i did i have to double check myself sometimes on the short usd cad you could set it to 10. now you could go in and set profit targets on the um the short spread on crude you just need to remember you entered at 45 okay so in this case let's say that you go down to 59.75 okay you want to come in above this 59 area you could set it at 59.25 if you wanted to it's totally up to you um on the long Canadian spread the entry price was at 60 and you know in this case you could go in and set it at 3025 if you have a huge movement you have the potential of being filled provided there's enough buyers and sellers in the market and it's very important that you can live with the risk that you have on because you could lose on both sides of the market okay there's always that potential what horizontal area that we spoke about Weber Are you talking about where the stochastics went flat and I used that high?
Okay. Sometimes it is a good idea. <laughs> uh, well, instead of doing that on that chart, um, let me just create another chart to do it with. Give me just a minute, Wepper, and let me bring up the chart. And three minutes. Okay, this is your chart, correct? All right. Now, in this case, um, I'm only going to enter a couple of indicators. One is the trend SR, okay? And I already know I need that at a setting of one. And then I'm going to do the stochastics, okay? Sometimes it, it really kind of helps to just have the plain Jane version. Um, and in this case, I got to set my stochastics at two instead of three because that's what I had mine on when I took the trade. All right, this is the area that you're talking about. Okay, now when we're reading divergence, we're compi comparing highs to highs in price and the stochastics. Okay, so if we're comparing highs, then I automatically know, okay, even without the trend SR, here's a high because it's, it's a three bar reversal. Okay. Um, here is a high, it's a three bar reversal, and here is a high, correct? And your next high is this one over here. You also have one in here. So if I go and I now mark this with a horizontal line, okay, so we have one here, oops, not horizontal or vertical line, excuse me. Okay, we have one here, we have one here, one here, one here, and one here, right? Are you with me so far? Okay, let me get rid of these. And this is something that I do automatically, Wepper, so it's good that you ask this question. Now, this one did not even create a bump or any kind of hesitation in the stochastics, right? So, I can take that off my chart because there was nothing in the stochastics that said this is a pivot high. Understand? But, when I come back and I look at this one, well, it did create that little bump. You can barely see it. But if I stretch it out, do you see how that pivoted up right there? So that tells me, hey, I do have a pivot there in the stochastics. So in this case, if I draw from here to here, do you see that? Now I have to blow it up for you to really see it, okay? Now, if I take that down and I go back and connect this high with this, well, actually, I think it was that one that we did, okay? Do you see this is lower and this is higher? It actually ended up being this one that turned it. Think, no. We can't take that trade because we have ATRs that are split. Okay. I was just looking to see if we could get in that one, but we can't. 
Do you understand that now? Um, in that case, it's, you know, trade station. There's nothing I can do about that. I know that it would be there because it's an isolated high followed by a reversal bar to the downside. And that's a difference between your data. I can't do anything about that. The formula is the same, it's just a difference in your data whipper. Now, I don't do this, I don't mark it, you know, but if you're new, you could always mark it. I, I can see it visually. Yeah, sometimes you won't with uh, Trade Station. I'm actually thinking about um, doing all of my data through multi-charts. Just with IQ feed. I like the IQ feed a lot. And if you're going to interpret the um, multiple ATRs right now, okay, and this is why I give so much information about what I'm doing with the indicators, you have the three-minute ATR is below price. The 45-minute is below price. The 12-minute is above price, okay? So instantly I know that the 12 and the 45 are against one another, okay? And I know that instantly just by looking at my colors. Colors are everything to me. Um, now we have about 15 minutes before the crude oil inventories. I will be ending the session after the crude oil inventory report. And again, you know, um, for those that joined me late, I did do uh, comparisons between my live account and demo. Um, on the first trades that we did, I didn't do it on the USD CAD crude, but you can go back and watch that video and it shows you how to do that comparison. Okay. And, you know, sometimes you'll find that trading the USD CAD is more advantageous than necessarily trading the crude oil inventory. Okay. It's too late to do it now or I would show you how to do it but it's too late because we entered these about 15 minutes ago. So No, you just have to sit and wait, let the marker report come out, see what happens. You see, this is another one. This is an isolated high here, whether y'all recognize it or not. It's a reversal bar to the downside, okay? You remember I told you I would not take this trade 
because the hidden aversions was saying it was going down. This is being a traitor. This is not just <clears throat> relying on a signal. It's being a traitor, okay? It's interpreting your charts to see if this is the best place for your entry, okay? Um, looks like we're going to get a pop to the upside on the uh, euro dollar. It should retrace back to the ATR around 23.88. You're oversold on both the 15 and the 30. Oh, the 15, the 30, and the 60. This is the 15-minute stochastics. This is the 30-minute, and this is the 60-minute, okay? Do you see how all of them are aligned as being overextended to the short side? Usually that's indicative that this market may go up, okay? I'm not doing any trades on that. I've got enough trades in here right now. That's the advantage of having all three of those lined up. Um, you can do it on NinjaTrader and TradeStation. It doesn't look as pretty as what NinjaTrader, I mean, uh, MultiCharts does. I think MultiCharts um, for the multiple time frames looks a lot neater. But that's just my opinion. This is the quaint cycles. Do you see how that quaint is down here at the green line? This is where I'm expecting it to go back up to the ATR at 2384. Usually when these two align together, that's when you're gonna get the move. And considering that's overextended on three different time frames, I do think we're going to get an upward move on the euro. Just my opinion there. You can also see on the NASDAQ, see how you're overextended? And this is actually telling you you're probably going to go up. You're probably going to try to test that ATR. You're also getting trend divergence. Look how overextended you are on the quaint. <clears throat> and this is a projection tool. I like to use it with the stochastics. It's pretty awesome. That's one that my programmer did. And he does that on his website, but I do like using it. Especially when you combine it with the stochastics, it's pretty awesome. Well, 
we've still got about 10 minutes before this market report comes out on the crude oil inventories. It's testing the ATR now on the U.S. CAD. Not that that matters because we're in both directions, um, so it doesn't really matter. Oh. I'll pin this one here so we can watch it when it does come out. You can see that it's come back to test this ATR. It's looking for an area of resistance. That's what it's looking for. Um. The higher time frames really not giving me a lot to read on the stochastics. Again, crude oil inventories will do whatever it wants to do, as we well know.
How do you get in reversal bars on the NASDAQ 15 minute and the Euro 15 minute chart? Should push, should push price up. You still got about four minutes before it ends though. This is where your reversal bar is forming. And you can see that you've got trend divergence here. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using a 15 minute chart, I don't like a 15 minute chart, but the quaint cycles have predefined um, time periods. So that's why you see me looking at the 15 minute chart. This just tells me more than likely it's gonna come back to the ATR now. The quaint is actually predicting 45 minutes to the upside. If you can see that 45 M here, um, again, you do want that reversal bar there. I'm really watching this area right here because there's potential for hidden divergence because this has gone above the one over here. I'm still waiting on it though. By the time it comes in, more than likely, uh, the market report's going to be out, so it's not going to matter. So I'm going to go grab me something to drink and I'll be right back. We're having a long session this morning. Okay, market report should be coming out very shortly. And again, I don't micromanage these. Um, I've got my target set. We have until 11 o'clock on most of them. I did do a spread uh, that ends at noon. I won't be here that long. <laughs> And it is moving to the downside on crude. The USD Canadian has not yet decided. Well, now it's moving back up. <laughs> Again, the market's going to do what the market wants to do when the market wants to do it. I still think we're going to go down on the USD CAD. Not that it matters. We did not take directionals on those. We're on both sides of the market, so it doesn't really matter. 
my bias on the Canadian is to the downside. My bias to crude is to the upside. You can see they're taking their time to digest the information. In other words, they're not making a snap decision. They're trying to analyze, okay, what does this mean for the market?
Mika, do you remember we were talking about the spreads are usually more aligned? And if you're noticing on the crude, it's not. Look at the difference between the current market and the indicative. Do you see how much premium they added to that one? At one time, this was at 80 and this was at 40. It's the same thing. I've noticed that on the futures, the spreads don't tend to align as well as the uh, Forex market. It's predominantly with the uh, futures, I think. I've noticed it on the futures, not as much so on the uh, Forex. You will find times on the Forex where it's like, are you nuts? I mean, really? We should be getting hidden divergence on the USD CAD if that current bar completes to the downside. Getting a lot of delayed reactions from market reports lately. And if you notice, they keep coming back um, to the low that was created prior to the announcement. Um, that seems to be a buying area on crude. Just my opinion, of course. It also depends on how that bar finishes that's developing now. It's a 15-minute bar, so it's got about four minutes. If the bar on the Canadian um, continues like it is right now, um, we should get another down bar on that. Doesn't mean that we would make profit on that binary because that binary is at 24. You'd have to have about a 25 pip move on that. 26 pips.
on the Canadian, you have come lower than this high over here, but the stochastics went higher. There's still divergence. It should push the market down, but this is where we're at on that binary. So this is going to have to be a momentum move to the downside for that binary to actually make profit. Just saying. to go in ah. um, I want to add the stochastics to this so now you've had trend divergence which should push this price bar up we'll see <clears throat> That's where the binary is on the uh, USD CAD. Now remember the strikes on the USD CAD are 10 pips versus 4 pips on some of the other markets. And normally on the U.S. Um, normally on the crude oil inventories, you have a eighty cents move. I don't think it's moved eighty cents today. Um, that does not look like an eighty cents move to me. So it went from a low of 51 up to 16. So that's a 50, 66 cent move on crude. Again, below the average for crude.
thankfully on this one we were not risking a lot. <clears throat> I think on this one it was five bucks, uh, 25, so that's 30. Here was 10, so that's 40. And maybe 57 total. And what that means is even if we lose on all of these positions, and we may, we didn't break the bank on them. And to me, that's more important than being right. It's always a matter of what you're risking because you have to live another day. You have to survive to be here tomorrow. Of course, if you only had a $100 account, you shouldn't have been risking that. You should have taken one side at the most. <clears throat> it's all about risk management and trading. I did record the presentation this morning, so after I convert it, I will post it uh, on YouTube and on the blog. For those of you that missed the first part of the session, you can uh, actually go to the blog and watch it. Probably be later this afternoon before I do it. Yeah, I'm not going to be in here much longer either, Wepper. I'm going to wait until 11 o'clock. Um, but unless we have something dramatic happen, um, these are going to be losing positions. about to put me to sleep, frankly.
Now, the only one that does not drop off at 11 o'clock would be the CAD at, uh, and that's a spread, and that's at 2960. That does not expire until noon. I will not be here until noon because I will be taking a nap by that time. <laughs> There is always the potential that this will go up above the 60 um, area, which is where we entered. Would it make a lot of money for us? No, but could it recoup some of the losses that we had? Sure. And remember, your losses here are not astronomical. They're very, very small. Very easy to recoup. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the session. There's no way this is going to move in your direction in five seconds. <laughs> so I hope everyone enjoyed the presentation. I will send out the email with the recordings available. And I hope everyone enjoyed the presentation. <laughs>